Firstly, many thanks to Ellen Lloyd over at AncientPages.com for her extensive research and writing on the conspiracy. Has a buried city within the Grand Canyon been covered up? The Hopi Indians have a traditional story told to them by their ancestors. It details the original pyramid builders living in an underworld in the Grand Canyon. Dissension arose between the good and the bad, the people of one heart and the people of two. Machetto, who was their chief, taught them how to leave the underworld. He caused a tree to grow up and pierce through the roof of the underworld, letting the people of one heart climb out. They settled by Passisvai, Red River, which is in Colorado, subsequently growing grain and corn. They then sent out a message to the Temple of the Sun, asking the blessing of peace, goodwill and rain for people of one heart, but their messenger never returned. Among the engravings of animals in the local caves is an image of a heart over the spot where it is said the entrance to be located. This legend was learned by W.E. Rollins during a year spent with the Hopi Indians. An article published in the Arizona Gazette reinforced this legend. Ever since the article appeared, there has been a lot of speculations whether an underground city actually exists. David Hatcher Childress, who examined the story, said, Perhaps the most amazing suppression of all is the excavation of an Egyptian tomb by the Smithsonian itself in Arizona. A lengthy front-page story of the Phoenix Gazette on April 5, 1909 gave a highly detailed report on the discovery and excavation led by a Professor S. A. Jordan of the Smithsonian. The World Explorers Club decided to check on this story by calling the Smithsonian in Washington, D.C. Speaking to a Smithsonian staff archaeologist, they told her that they were investigating a story from a 1909 Phoenix newspaper article about the Smithsonian Institution's excavation of rock-cut vaults in the Grand Canyon where Egyptian artifacts had been discovered, and whether the Smithsonian Institute could give me any more information on the subject. Her reply was as follows. The first thing I can tell you, before we go any further, is that no Egyptian artifacts of any kind have ever been found in North or South America. Therefore, I can tell you that the Smithsonian Institute has never been involved in such excavations. While it cannot be discounted that the entire story is an elaborate newspaper hoax, the fact that it was on the front page, named the prestigious Smithsonian Institution, and gave a highly detailed story that went on for several pages lends a great deal to its credibility. It is hard to believe such a story could have come out of thin air. Is the idea that ancient Egyptians came to the Arizona area in the ancient past so objectionable and preposterous that it must be covered up? Perhaps the Smithsonian Institution is more interested in maintaining the status quo than rocking the boat with astonishing new discoveries that overturned previously accepted academic teachings. Historian and linguist Carl Hart, editor of World Explorer, then obtained a hiker's map of the Grand Canyon from a bookstore in Chicago. Pouring over the map, they were amazed to see that much of the area on the north side of the canyon has Egyptian names. The area around 94 Mile Creek and Trinity Creek had areas, rock formations apparently, with names like Tower of Set, Tower of Ra, Horus Temple, Osiris Temple, and Isis Temple. Could these legends actually be true? As always, thanks for watching, guys. Take care. Edinburgh, Scotland a very ancient land with a castle built upon an extinct volcano. Many mysterious things lay and possibly live within Scotland, the most famous of which undoubtedly, the extremely elusive Loch Ness Monster. However, recent surveys would suggest that among the most popular of attractions are in fact its vast collection of, to the well-trained eye, extremely ancient coves and cave systems. Hand cut, these caverns will demonstrate the immense skill, determination, and of course ingenuity of our distant ancestors, revealing to all those who are lucky enough to visit them just what these ancient people were capable of. And hidden behind a modest door on Drum Street in Gilmerton is quite possibly the most incredible network of them all – underground passageways, large, perfectly carved chambers, benches, tables, and even a small chapel all painstakingly hewn from solid stone by hand. And thankfully, due to their popular attraction with tourists, often the explorers amongst us, many open-minded individuals, have often been left with a sense of discomposure regarding the officially upheld explanation for their origins. As such, and rather predictably, 
many alternative theories, often involving a far more ancient origin for the cove and its purpose now abound. The mass-regurgitated view regarding the construction would suggest that a blacksmith by the name of George Patterson, who actually resided within the cove within the 18th century, somehow created them alone, by hand, and within a mere five-year period with even George himself claiming to have cut this extensive, elaborate, and unquestionably enigmatic underground structure using simple hand tools. Since the claims three centuries ago, however, numerous holes have been seemingly discovered within this popularly upheld sequence of events, fueling the already prevalent suspicions within skeptic parties, maybe in an attempt to hide its true antiquity, as we experience so often during our research. On Wednesday, the 15th of August, 1906, a front-page column by a writer known as F. R. Coles for The Scotsman dug into George Patterson's version of events, commonly referred to as the tradition. Coles found it to have been nothing but a fictional fallacy, possibly created by George himself in an attempt to profit from deception. It seems Patterson not only accomplished the seemingly impossible, excavating hundreds of tons of stone but also it seems he successfully went unnoticed by the entire surrounding population during this entire procedure. Just who could have built Gilmerton Cove? When was it built? Why did they build it? With modern radar scans of the surrounding area indicating that even more systems lay close by, still undiscovered, possibly isolated by ancient cave-ins, you have to wonder, could the Gilmerton Cove be far older? and originally far grander and extensively larger than anyone today could have ever possibly imagined. Will we ever solve the mystery of Gilmerton Cove? It seems only time will tell. There are a number of ruins on Earth which are either located atop nearly impossible mountaintops or on the ledges of desert hilltops, making sanctuaries from masterfully cut stone temples, and Masada is of no exception. The first official funded excavations in the area took place from 1963 to 1965 and was under former IDF chief of staff and archaeologist Yigal Yadin. The dry desert climate allowed the preservation of classy frescoes and organic remains belonging to the rebels who once called the sanctuary temples home. However, it has long been claimed that the archaeological team were not given full access to the site and have repeatedly noted that they are aware of the site's secret underground layers, yet were not able to fully explore it during the 60s. However, recent changes to attitudes toward historic sites has secured funding for a full exploration of these as yet unexplored underground tunnels. For the first time since 2006, a Tel Aviv University team, headed by Roman period archaeologist Guy Stiebel, have launched new excavations at the UNESCO World Heritage Site examining previously unexplored areas of the legendary fortress. Quote, This is the next generation, Stiebel told the Times, adding that his team planned to excavate new sections of the dwellings as well as a garden constructed by Herod. He further noted, quote, Our intention is to further explore a mysterious underground structure that was detected in the earliest aerial photographs of the site in the 1920s. Yet, alas, the building's underground layers have remained unexplored. Dr. Stiebel, intriguingly, although seemingly aware of the void's existence, was reluctant to label its past uses, stated that it was possibly used as a hideout or escape route during the Siege of Masada, although he made it clear that he is unsure at the moment of the original purpose of the underground systems. Dr. Stiebel exclaimed his excitement to return to the site after an 11-year absence in statements to the media, quote, A lifetime would not suffice to get a glimpse of all the hidden beauties of Masada. Its magic is not just in the equipment, it is also in small things, end quote. Even though several experts believe that more than 95% of Masada's total size has already been explored, Stiebel believes that its core is yet to be discovered. We will, of course, keep you posted on any controversial or intriguing discoveries made during the excavations. It is a place which we find highly compelling. 
From time to time, we will share with you one of the more intriguing exhibits that can be found within the museums of Giza. Beyond the mountainous displays of precious jewels and finely cast golden relics, which captivate the crowds who flock to experience this extremely rich history, we personally find the more valuable of objects are often overlooked. Indeed, these precious masks and past pharaoh's possessions are undoubtedly exquisite in nature. However, there are some objects, never designed to stun or impress, but built with a function. Functions which could shed light on the most intriguing and mysterious aspects of this past civilization. The Khufu ship being but one of these said artifacts. A boat found disassembled under the Great Pyramid, once said to have floated through the sky. And although the physical idea of this ship actually flying is a leap too far for some, there is, in fact, an artifact which exists found in 1898 during an excavation of the Padi Ayman tomb in Saqqara, Egypt, which you may find a bit more practically designed for flight through the Egyptian skies. Although numerous sources over the past century have surfaced accusing Egyptian authorities of concealing the discovery of Vimanas, ancient flying machines, within the pyramids of Giza. Our said artifact seems to have slipped through this net of secrecy. Often with these well-stocked and well-preserved tombs, resting places of past pharaohs, whom once possessed unimaginable riches, numerous toy models of their once favored crafts and vessels will be discovered, exquisitely constructed miniature replicas of their favorite forms of travel. It seems this artifact may have indeed been filtered through the security netting of public paradigm, as doing so, it seems to have lost its tailplane. Known as the Saqqara bird, it is now largely thought by many to have been a replica of an ancient flying craft, more specifically a glider. Clearly inspired by a bird's flight, the fixed wing upon its back has been found to be perfectly angled to create lift. Egyptian physician, archaeologist, parapsychologist and dowser Khalil Messia has concluded that the ancient Egyptians developed the first aircrafts. Predictably, he has experienced considerable hostility regarding his expose of evidences. One particular effort was undertaken by a character known as Martin Gregory, a builder and designer of free-flight gliders. He apparently built an exact replica of the Saqqara bird made of balsa wood. After testing this replica, Gregory would conclude that the Saqqara bird never flew. He told the interested parties that it was totally unstable in flight. Even after a tailplane was fitted, he claimed that the glider's performance was disappointing. He finished by concluding that the Saqqara bird was probably made as a child's toy or a weather vane. This clear attempt to suppress the truth, however, failed, and Martin has since been proven to have lied regarding the abilities of the glider. The question is why did he lie? According to Messia's son, Dawood Khalil Messia, a successful architect who has thankfully continued the work of his father, Gregory's suggestion that the Saqqara bird was a weather vane is impossible, due to the lack of markings or any holes on the model that would serve as a means of hanging it. Additionally, and most importantly, aerodynamics expert Simon Sanderson also tested a replica model in a wind tunnel without a tail plane and found that it produced four times the glider's own weight and lift. In Liverpool University, Sanderson then subjected it to another, more powerful wind tunnel, this time after adding the missing tail. He stated that the Saqqara bird actually flew quite well, clearly to the annoyance of certain people who are probably now regretting not seizing the entire artifact some years ago, rather than just the tail plane. Over 2,000 years after the ancient Egyptians carved this mysterious bird, modern technology has proven beyond doubt that at full size, it could have indeed once flown through the Egyptian skies. In Mystery History's opinion, the ancient ruins found upon the plateau of Giza are some of, if not the most, heavily debated, heavily guarded, and most academically protected ancient site on Earth. Yet it remains one of the most talked about, mysterious, intriguing, ancient stonework of them all. Many people are now aware of the anomalies, which were once tightly controlled secrets, surrounding the exterior features of the build, and more importantly, the achievements that these feats once were. 
These inexplicable factors – the size of the megalithic exoskeleton, the vastly different ages of the casing stones – are now thought by many as the defining motive for a cover-up regarding the pyramid's true age and original purpose. Media blackouts, counterintelligence, and many other outlandish conspiracies now rife among the research of the site, from giants to UFOs, the ideas and theories people have put forward for their function, or indeed, what could be hidden in voids constantly discovered yet to be penetrated, these hidden rooms, along with their ancient entrances, remain a complete enigma, even in recent years, as advances in penetrative radar become a reality and accessible to self-funded individuals and research teams, more and more voids unexplained heat anomalies, and even air shafts not known of before, continue to be discovered within these enormous mystifying structures. Yet, as mentioned, the subculture, many genuine yet misguided in their investigative method, yet also many funded individuals involved in many other hard-to-deny subjects, has successfully swamped the field with dis and or misinformation, creating opinionated followings with a successfully corrupted impartiality, deceptively manipulated into becoming said misinformation's advocates, rather than whence they came, an open mind, a skill for discussion, and an unbiased critical approach to subjects whose true nature are actively being protected. The predictably far fewer articles, books, and other logical, critical, impartial to all but fact, unwavering competent research done by many capable individuals, although adrift within an ocean of fallacy, shines much light upon some highly compelling yet albeit highly controversial features of the Plateau of Giza, features which may one day lead us to ultimately unlocking the pyramid's secrets and allowing us to finally understand what these structures' past functions truly were, not only in detail, but perhaps in an attempt of replication. During our own research, we have found some interesting similarities between Giza and Bosnia, among other lesser-known pyramid structures. And this curious yet continually reoccurring feature is now being more frequently discovered all over the world. The Great Pyramid of Bosnia, for example, a site discovered by Samir Osmanagic, has an ingenious river which, after three years of research, was confirmed by him and his team to have had an artificial current. The reason for this is currently unknown, but it seems water was a significant factor in the past function of these ancient structures. Water is a curious thing, and in many situations, acts just like that of electricity. It runs in currents and travels through tubes like electric through cables. Yet no one seems to know what electricity is. We hypothesize that these water features are of tremendous significance when it comes to understanding the true function of these incredible structures. But I digress. The plateau has always intrigued me. Although buried by a desert sand, the solid sandstone below is of an unimaginable size and seemingly level, over 40 feet deep in some places, yet no one truly understands its origins. Indeed. Structures as large as the pyramids would need impressive foundations. But the plateau, it seems, is far too large and, if man-made, bafflingly sparse of any ruins, structures which one would have presumed would have been the reason for its enormous construction. There is, however, another hypothesis. A legend that told of a lost labyrinth, a secret underground lair as big as a town a secret underground structure so large and thus so easy to get lost within, it became known as the labyrinth. Long spoke of but always dismissed as mythological, this due to a lack of any substantial evidence for its existence. That is, until a few years ago, when a groundbreaking rediscovery was made, yet unfortunately it seems, this groundbreaking event was somehow masterfully stifled not shared by mainstream media, funded institutions with their armory of literature and magazines alike. Thus, it merely becomes an observational exercise in yet another display of the influence 
our currently controlling institutions have over public opinion, preventing an underground city of gigantic proportions buried beneath Giza never successfully achieving public notoriety. The sand of Harara was scanned by a Belgian-Egyptian expedition team in 2008 in an effort to research something known as the Quarry Theory, suggested by Petri in 1889, following his finding of a great artificial stone surface measuring 304 meters by 244 meters. Petri interpreted the enormous artificial stone plateau as the foundation of the labyrinth, concluding that the building itself, although long believed to have been totally demolished in the Ptolemaic period, had in fact survived and lay hidden for millennia. The surveys proved its foundation remained unpenetrated and still laid undiscovered beneath the sandstone, never lost, the possibility of the results being that of the roof of the labyrinth, all but proven true. The following is an excerpt from the DIG's official report. Quote, Underneath this upper zone, below the artificial stone surface, appears, in spite of the turbid effect of the groundwater, at a depth of 8 to 12 meters, a grid structure of gigantic size, made of a very highly resistant material like granite stone. This proves the presence of a colossal archaeological feature which has to be reconsidered as the roof of the still existing labyrinth." End quote. Are the legends true? Does the labyrinth of Giza still lay hidden, unexplored beneath the sands of Egypt? We find the evidence to suggest such highly compelling.